to buy or not to buy? That is the question. So you finally joined that internet group about electric skateboards. And of course, your first stupid question went something like this. Hi hey guys, I'm new to electric skateboarding. Just wondering, what's the best electric skateboard to buy at the moment? Little did you realize you just opened Pantera's box. <laughs> Some bloke called Jono chimes in and says, you're not a real man unless you build your own skateboard, mate. Cameron from Seattle politely types, LaCroix is the best electric skateboard by far. Cameron's never actually ridden an electric skateboard, but he spends a lot of time on Reddit reading reviews. Wing from California says the Backfire board is by far the best. It has LED lights on it. Wow. After that initial introduction, you're probably thinking to yourself that lime scooter down the street jammed behind the dumpsters looking pretty inviting. Maybe there is an option that all the experts on the internet forgot to talk to you about. I'm guessing you don't have a spot welder. Not many people do. And you probably don't really want to make your own battery. So DIY is way out of the question. I'm here today to tell you it's not black and white. There are options in the middle. It's not just DIY or buy. So what's this middle ground? This is the video you've all been waiting for, buy to upgrade. I'm gonna teach you how to hack the system and become a real hero at your next local group ride. The lazy man DIY. A future-proof build that grows with you as your skills develop. This option puts you in charge of your e-skate journey. It involves buying a platform. This is a platform. Let's have a look inside. All right. Now, as you can see, this is not a complete electric skateboard. There's no deck. It's obviously not assembled. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of work. So why have I chosen this kit? There's heaps of different things on the market. What makes this special? Let me unpack this. So this is a DIY kit. Now, DIY just means do it yourself. So you just gotta screw shit together. But a lot of people DIY for electric skateboards means really doing everything yourself. This is much easier than real hardcore DIY. And that's why I'm showing it to you. Obviously you need a deck. I'm gonna use this nice little carbon fiber wrapped it's like a, it's a carbon fiber wrapped, wrapped a deck. Sometimes your worries just hypnotize you. So this kit comes with everything you need to get started. You just need a deck and a screwdriver and maybe a drill. The kit comes with these tools, but I also had to use a few drill bits and a cordless drill with a Phillips head bit. So yeah, I mean, buy these you're probably gonna need some stuff like this at home. So what makes this kit so special? There are a few key things that I noticed about this product. One, it's actually a really solid enclosure. This is an aluminium die cast box. Why is that important? Well, cause it's just gonna last a long time. Skateboards get hammered. You drop them on the ground. You're riding over rocks and off gutters. You need something strong, so check. Strong enclosure. The next thing is, it's designed to allow you to change the battery. Now why is that important? Because battery technology evolves rapidly, growing in capacity and getting cheaper. You don't really wanna be tied into a pack that is not upgradable. This battery pack is made with 18650 size cells, and it uses Samsung 30Qs, giving you a total of 216 watt hour. It's 10S 2P. It does take up most of the space, but what you might not see is that this case actually has heaps of room in it. Look how much spare space there is when that lid's on there. It's huge. Now, why is that important? As your skills progress and your love for electric skateboarding grows, hopefully, you might want to upgrade. Now, this here 
is a piece of foam. But I've cut it out in a particular size to represent what an upgraded battery for something like this system might look like. This is a battery pack made from Samsung 40T cells. Now these are a newer size cell, 21700. That means the cell diameter is 21 millimeter and the length of the cylinder is 70 millimeters. If you put them together in a 10S 2P pack, you get this. Guess what? It fits. The key point about this 40T pack is it's rated to output an impressive 75 amps, where this guy is limited to half that current output. So not a huge difference in the physical size, but much more power output. Now that's key if you're gonna upgrade your motors later, or if you just want more performance. Something like this direct drive motor kit versus what you get in it, you might want a little bit more power to run these guys, especially with bigger wheels. So, aluminium case, the option to upgrade to more powerful, larger battery pack. What else? Well, if you have a look over this side, this is where the speed controller is installed. This is just a standard hobby wing. It's going to work fine, cheap to replace. The good news is if it failed, the design of this means you could easily replace it or you could upgrade it to something like this, the Foxbox Unity, which has the ability to give you a lot more control over the performance of your electric skateboard. It will allow you to take advantage of the higher current output that a bigger battery upgrade gives you. It also allows you to get and program them to get really smooth acceleration and braking, which you can't really do with this standard one. This is not programmable. You can't just connect any motor into this and expect it to work well. You need something like the Foxbox Unity that is fully programmable. Basically, the most important thing is configure the motors to correctly operate, to spin the way they're engineered to spin. This can do it, this can't. So, quick recap. Nice, strong, aluminium case. It's going to last you a long time. It's really quite strong. I love it. Now, I didn't mention it before, but you could actually just have two of these, one in your bag and one in the board. So at the beginning, even before you consider going to bigger, more powerful batteries, you've just got the option to carry a battery and swap it out. Like, that's, that's nice, it's a nice feature. There's plenty of space to upgrade your motor controller. So you start with this and can progress to a far more advanced build just by upgrading. You don't need tools. You don't really need to go deep into the world of DIY. This is all plug and play stuff. It all just connects together. So in this video series, I'm going to start off with the standard stuff and I'll build this for you today to show you how easy and straightforward it is. I'm gonna ride this setup for a week or so and then I'm gonna slowly do the upgrades and keep making a video about the upgrades that I've done to show you how a progression like this might unfold if you were to do it in the real world. This kind of component-based build is really what I expect to see happening more and more frequently in the world of electric skateboarding. Really, you should be able to go into your local electric skateboard store and they should have a suite of products on the shelf that you can pick and choose. Pick the battery box you like, pick the motor wheel combination you like, the motor controller you like, the hand controller you like. DIY doesn't have to be a complex, difficult process. Buy to upgrade. Component-based builds are the future. This kind of component-based build has been a dream of mine for the last five years. I've always seen that this is where the industry needed to go for mass adoption and to honestly, to satisfy people's desires. You know, I love a kicktail deck. I don't want to get a stupid flexing bamboo deck, but 
I also like simple hub motor builds because you just plug stuff in, it's clean and tidy and hassle free and maintenance free. But I personally like the ability to control the board. If I want to put my six year old boy on it, I want to be able to tone it right down and customize to the perfect settings just for him. Or perhaps my wife wants to come for a ride with us and I want to be able to put a safe set of parameters in here that's going to be really easy for a beginner. Or one day I grab this board and I want to gun it. So I want to be able to change the current output and get the power that I want when I want it and not when I don't. There are a few ways you could mount this on to a skateboard. The way I'm going to do it today is just through these four holes here. Now, every deck has a little bit of flex in it. You don't want to attach a rigid structure like this. This cannot flex. You don't want to attach that in a way that is going to prevent the deck from being able to flex naturally. These screws didn't actually come with this kit and I'm just going to mount it through this here. So let's build this. Skateboarding has always been about expressing your own style. A key part of this is building a board that complements your style. The ability to be able to build your own rig whilst also using parts that are upgradable is an extremely important concept for the growth and popularity of the industry. It can also be more cost effective and hopefully more fun. Now, the kind folks at MaxFine actually sent me two batteries. They sent me a airplane friendly one, which is only 160 watt hours, and then a 216 watt hour, which is a, the more powerful pack, which is what I'm gonna put in there. It's not too bad. These motor connectors are so easy to connect. There's an arrow on there, and there's an arrow on here. And guess what? You line them up and push it in. Okay, let's see if it works. Power on, that looks good. Power on the remote. Seems to work fine straight away, so no programming involved. I've put in eight screws. Obviously, we need to put the front on. And so we'll do that now. This skate tool does have the Phillips head bit in it. So you can use that if you like, but I've got the power tool. You just have to be really careful. You do not strip the heads of these screws. The material is quite soft. So that's it guys, 12 screws. And I've got myself a decent little platform that I can slowly upgrade over time. I'm gonna ride this board now for a week or two and maybe I'll take some videos of that and we'll try to document the performance and I'll explain what reason would I actually wanna upgrade it? Like maybe it's good enough. So you wouldn't do anything, right? So I'll explain my thoughts and why anyone would spend any more money to make this different. So, so that's it for now. I hope you like this video. So what do you reckon? Are you into DIY, buy, or do you think you'll go for a component-based system that facilitates upgrading over time? Write in the comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe to my videos. Head over to my new Patreon account if you wanna see the detailed analysis video, and have a good day. Thank you for becoming a patron. This is my first video in a series of detailed technical review videos. 84. It is holding on to these rods. Now we're stuck at 61. If we hit it in the right spot, now I can't turn it off. See that? So I think I've just found a bug. And remember, there's only 12 amps running through this. Okay, so feels like a normal skate tool can get this motor off. Six, 670 grams. Uh-huh.